Well, not too long ago, we decided it would be a great idea to try to speedrun Halo 2 on Legendary difficulty under 3 hours. We all know how that went. But if we're truly going after 100% achievement completion before Halo Infinite comes out, there's one much much bigger threat in our crosshairs that we're going to have to overcome if we have any chance at all at wrapping up the achievements before the launch of the next Halo game. And that would of course be the Halo Lasso achievements. Now simply put, for every single Halo game that is in the Master Chief Collection, there's a Lasso achievement for that Halo game. Also there's a bonus achievement for completing all of the Master Chief featured Halo games with Lasso on as well. So once we complete Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4, with Lasso on, we will get an extra achievement, and then we still have to complete Reach and ODST. So, to put it simply, Luke and I have no experience whatsoever doing Halo Lasso. We have never done a Lasso run of a Halo game, but we have heard from many, many sources, Halo 2 Lasso is just awful. It's the worst thing that could possibly exist. So, of course, we decided that it's time for us to jump right in to the worst one of them all, and see if we can complete Halo 2 with Lasso enabled. We thought, hey, let's get the worst out of the way. It can't be that bad after all. We did not know what we were in for. Short disclaimer before we start the video, since we were live streaming this, you will see my face cam for most of the footage. I hope that doesn't bother anyone too much, uh, but thanks everybody for watching already. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe. Okay, just to quickly explain how Lasso works. Essentially, we're gonna be on Legendary difficulty with most skulls on for Halo 2 Anniversary. We're doing the Lasso playlist, which by the way, if you're gonna start this with a friend, make sure you run the two levels individually first, like the cutscene levels, or else you won't get achievements later on. That's the one thing you have to remember to do. Fortunately, we caught that along the way. We didn't mess up too badly. And to summarize what skulls are active, essentially the Iron Skull, which is already kind of enabled with Halo 2 Legendary Co-op, is on where if one person dies both players are considered dead there's no respawning on your teammate then the black eye skull is enabled which means that our health will only recharge if we melee and kill an enemy in halo 2 there's a bunch of other skulls enabled that make the enemies always invisible always have more health it makes them more aware and higher ranks and they're more likely to throw grenades at us and then there's even more skulls that remove our hud disable aim assist give us less ammo when picking up weapons it's honestly a mess and you would think something things like the Scarab Skull or the Feather Skull could really come in handy here, but nope, those aren't actually included in the Lasso playlist, so essentially anything that you think would help you isn't there, you're on your own, good luck, and this was easily built to be one of the most challenging Halo experiences that have broken so many players along the way. And what's funny is we have no experience going into it, so we really didn't know what we were about to get ourselves into until we loaded up on Cairo Station. I'll give you guys a small spoiler alert. Yeah, we did get through Cairo station. It took us 17 hours in total, and this was only the first level that we experienced. And if it hadn't been for Halo Completionist's guides, seriously, if you're running Lasso, speedrun, anything, that's the go-to channel. He has a whole new series with the best new tricks that are recently being used. I don't think we would have even gotten remotely close to beating Cairo Station in itself. Okay, so starting things off, we're in this open area where the enemies drill through the door, and you have to kind of find a way to push past them in the safest way possible. Essentially, we tried to sneak past them, run into this hallway, then turn around and take out the enemies, which seemed to give us a little bit of a jump on them, where sometimes you can maybe pull off an assassination. Mind you, this was a lot of practice nailing these types of encounters down, but since there is so much that went on in Cairo Station, we're just going to go through the most successful run of the first level. Then we had this lovely part where we had to make our way through this hallway, which was always really tedious, and a lot of the time we would just die here. But once we could clear the two little sections, our our main goal was to now babysit Sergeant Johnson and make sure we pushed him all the way up the stairs, around the corner, into the next room, and then at that point he has to go into the room on his own accord, and we have to be careful because sometimes he just runs off and will despawn out of the game completely, but Sergeant Johnson is so integral to Cairo Station, and it's so complicated how his involvement works that we were already way in over our heads trying to figure this out. This first open area is absolute hell because these elites are not just like regular elites. You can't just quickly take them out. They have a lot of health. Usually you require two overcharged plasma shots and then a headshot to 
take them out. And since we don't have HUD, aiming, you know, a BR shot to the head is a lot harder than what it would be if we could see where we're aiming. And one of the most frustrating things about Halo 2 is that assassinations don't work the way that they're supposed to work for whatever reason. Maybe it's because of the Sputnik skull, but essentially you can punch an elite in the back and it's like up in the air as to whether or not the game will register you as assassinating the elite or maybe the elite will just quickly back smack you and you'll die for whatever reason. Sometimes you can hit the elite five or six times and still die. It, it really doesn't make sense most of the time, but we learned that pretty quickly on and it only got worse from here. Besides having to deal with Sergeant Johnson occasionally running off and despawning and essentially us having to start the whole run over again, if we could manage to push far enough up into the level where we got to this first hangar room, this was the section that literally had caused us so much trouble from the beginning where majority of our time learning how Lasso worked was spent up in this room. Essentially, the strategy we ended up using after us trying literally everything in the book we could think of was to push Sergeant Johnson all the way up the stairs, back down, hope that the enemies don't kill me in the process of trying to knock him down to the lower level. Then while Luke was standing on top trying to pick off the grunts as quickly as possible, I would try to make sure Sergeant Johnson was in the open so that the elites would attack him and then occasionally Sergeant Johnson might fight back and take their shields out and in which case Luke and I would then try to quickly headshot an elite and pick them off. This was so tedious. There's no checkpoints through any of this section and it's just wave after wave after wave after wave of enemies that just keep on coming in. What we ended up realizing over time besides the fact that Sergeant Johnson just loves these boxes and will do whatever it takes to hide behind the box separating him from the elites is that we needed to get Sergeant Johnson as close to the elites as possible possible so that they will aggro him, put their guns down and we don't have to worry about being shot at and maybe try to sword him. And then we would shoot at the enemies so that they would become visible long enough for Sergeant Johnson, who we gave a plasma rifle to, to maybe shoot back occasionally. Honestly, this was so much work and it was so frustrating just to only be this far into the lasso and be completely frozen still for days of trying on this level. But surely enough, we started getting more and more experience with what the elites might be doing and how to suspect or predict what action they might do next. So while it definitely was frustrating at times, we were making progress slowly learning how to methodically pick off the elites. Sometimes we would take a risk and go for the assassination, and sometimes it would backfire. But at the very least, with how many times we spent in this area pushing boxes around, trying to find the safest place to stand, trying to figure out how to pull the elites or draw the aggro onto Johnson, we learned a lot and it was definitely probably not worth it. But eventually we got good enough where we could clear the room overall and that was a win in itself and if we were smart enough we could quickly try to use grenades on the door and jump down to assassinate the elites that bust in the next area right away and then we would run up and hit a checkpoint and that's where we made a mistake as with how much time we had spent in that first hangar room we never really wanted to risk dying and having to do the first hangar room again and again and again and hopefully get a run where we could get past it and essentially when we ran ahead to get the checkpoint we ended ended up despawning Sergeant Johnson, who would have been really helpful to have in the later parts of this level. But at this point in the run, just with how many times we had failed in the first hangar room, we would just decide to go on without Sergeant Johnson and hope we could figure out something along the way. The second hangar room, we were anticipating it to be rough, but maybe not as bad as the first one. But turns out there's actually a really interesting strategy where if you use the machine gun turret up above and you push some boxes in place, you can actually stand in a spot where the enemies can't even hit you and you can just kind of kill all the enemies very slowly but surely. This one took a little bit but Luke actually managed to get the trick down easily enough and was able to clear out these enemies after you know just shooting at them for a long time. Occasionally I would try to shoot some rounds from the back corner just to try to get them out of their hiding spots but it actually worked out decently well enough. Going down to the lower section was always a little bit nerve-wracking because there's this really weird loading sequence where sometimes we'll be pushing into this room where we know enemies will rush us from up ahead and it would teleport one of us depending on who wasn't as far ahead in a random spot and it was really disorienting at times. So we definitely had to learn to not only adapt to when the game randomly teleports one of us but also figure out where the enemies are coming from. Mind you they're invisible so there's that extra challenge but if we moved quick enough we could take out the elites in the next room and stay below the armory and try to plot out what we're going to do with the enemies up above. This next room was never a walk in the park but with enough good checkpoints and a little bit of trial and error we could usually work together to 
to quickly take out the elites on the upper level. But this next room was an absolute mess. There's so many turrets, so many grenades constantly being thrown at us. There's elites that can just aim bot us at times. It was really, really frustrating. And while we spent a lot of time slowly trying to come up with a plan to methodically pick off each enemy one by one, we spent so much time doing it. We decided maybe at this point, it's best if we just split up and have one person make a run for it and just hope that maybe we can get a loading sequence and spawn the other player on later on rather than trying to make a run that draws so much attention that we're both being shot at and one of us ends up dying and we go back anyways. So I decided just to sneak ahead and Luke kind of just hung back reading chat and actually after a few tries of just doing a quick jump over and running across I was able to get into the next room where if we were speed running it typically would give us a checkpoint but since Luke wasn't with me it didn't want to give us a checkpoint. Now there are a few enemies in that hallway that is ahead while Luke is just kind of chilling back reading chat and my main strategy was just to kill one or two of them that was obviously in my way which luckily enough I was able to do with my sword quick enough and then just make a sprint to the end door which I knew would teleport Luke to me and it actually worked out pretty flawlessly. I don't think we had too much trouble pulling this one off. From this next area we had to memorize exactly where the elites would come in at so I could quickly shoot my BR at the one that Luke would hit with the plasma pistol and then we'd work together to try to take out the other one. There was at least one to three more elites outside and even if we went the optimal routes we still couldn't really clear them out too well so it was a lot of coordination and communication as to how we were going to pick off these elites because if you don't have a plasma pistol a BR just isn't enough firepower to take out the elites you definitely have to take their shields down first if you're going to try to get anywhere with it when we got inside the next area this is the part where all the buggers fly up and boy is this part completely awful so it was at this point I told Luke just to go ahead and get a sharpie and just draw all over his computer screen where his gunshots would fire so he could actually aim a little bit. Just kidding, the real strat is to, you know, put a little tape or a little piece of something sticky on your screen so you can see where the middle is. And Luke would go to town trying to pick off the buggers the best he could with the BR ammo that's scattered about. Fortunately enough, he was able to get almost all of them out and we just had to worry about the enemies down at the bottom and kind of tactically take them out. Otherwise, we'd have to go back to the last checkpoint and do the buggers all over again. But the end was in sight. We just had to clear out a few more enemies here at this end area with the turrets. We're able to pick them off and we really took our time on the last two enemies that fly overhead at that one section because they can really mess up your run here. And then we made it to the final room, which apparently people in the chat were saying would be just as hard as the hangar room. And to an extent, they did have a point. This room was not easy. Essentially, the strat that we came up with with enough trial and error and learning the way is we had to set up boxes best way that we could at the beginning area, Luke would hang back with his BR and I would try to aggro them with the sword and hide the best I could and kind of learned what I learned when I was trying to manipulate the boxes and Johnson earlier to drag the elites where I can. Now in this room, there's just so many elites. There's six or seven of them just surrounding a bomb and we had to kind of keep track as to how many there were left at all times. And there's these dual needlers that will completely just eviscerate us in a second. And if you kill the guy with dual needlers, another one will just pick up the dual needlers. So you're in a lose-lose situation. The one saving grace though, is that if you run with an elite into the elevator, he won't follow you in there. He'll actually turn around and walk away, which meant that if I could just get one aggroed and angry enough to pull a sword out and not shoot me in the back, I could actually lead him back to the elevator and then when he turns around, quickly assassinate him and get my shields back up. This actually worked most of the time as long as I got close enough to the elites where they would get angry enough to drop their gun and pull their sword out, and then I can run them back and hope for the best outcome. Then during all of this, sometimes the elites would kind of freeze up when they would see me nearby behind a box and not really be sure what to do or where to go, like their AI is kind of locked and unsure movement or something. And Luke, standing in the back with his BR, would take advantage of this and try to plasma pistol the elite twice and then shoot them with the BR and pick a couple of them off along the way. This worked well enough until we had a couple of runs where we got real close and died, but once we were pretty confident with this and we had the run where the needlers got stuck in a place that was out of reach to the elites, we maybe actually had a chance at this. So sure enough, we picked off everything we could and we knew there was maybe just one elite left and we kind of just rushed him and hoped for the best. We actually pulled
pulled this level off. And it was like this huge wave of relief just coming through because even though Cairo Station was not easy and it took us so long, we knew we could at least do it. We could beat one of the harder levels from what people had told us in Halo 2 Lasso and we knew that the next couple levels maybe would at least be something different and we could try a different approach. So with that, we were moving on to level two. Okay, so Outskirts is the next level and this one definitely was a very different experience compared to Cairo Station. Since we already knew a lot of the speedrunning strats, we kind of just jumped across the buildings like we normally would and avoided majority of the enemies. It was really nice not to have to worry about finding Johnson, making him follow us wherever we went. We got to the hallway, we tried to avoid the elites the best that we could and then pick them off when they were in the right spot. Then when we got to the outside area, we cleared the way and we tried to do a very typical out of bounds glitch we normally do to clear this level and get to the tunnel quickly. But since we don't have the feather skull here, we actually couldn't make our way up to the building. So we were kind of stuck. We pushed ahead a little bit to see what options we had and the enemies up ahead are pretty brutal and we didn't think we'd be able just to drive a ghost right through this like we were speed running. So we made our way back and we actually looked up Halo Completionist's guide and Silver had a really great guide to bypass this section by jumping backwards, going up on this platform, walking alongside some invisible stretches and essentially it gave me a way back to the earlier section of the level that's deloaded and I'm able to climb my way up onto the buildings from there and continue the level on top of the buildings the way I normally would. Then I was able to make my way all the way to the tunnels. I had to worry about just one jackal that would try to quick scope me the second he could. I dropped into the tunnels, we got into ghosts, Luke teleported to me, and so far things were going really good. The ghost part was slow and steady. We made sure to take out every enemy along the way. We're making decent time, but by the time we reached the end section of this level, it was absolute hell. Three ghosts roll up on us and they're brutal each time. Just a few bullets could pop us. So we had to devise a strategy where we ended up reverting back a little earlier in the level and instead I jumped out of my ghost and decided to push a box with my sword all the way through the entire tunnel, much like how I would use my boxes for cover in Cairo Station. And this kind of gave me a little bit of a safe spot where first of all, I wouldn't just instantly die. And Luke, who was getting a little bit better at taking out some of the ghosts, could maneuver around and use as a little bit of cover while up on the sidewalk to do some damage on the ghosts. I would try my best to stick the ghosts where I could and flip them, which would actually be one of the best ways to take out these ghosts because a quick second grenade will blow up the ghost before they can get back inside of them again. This part took a lot of trial and error, but after about maybe an hour of us getting stuck here, we were able to take out those ghosts and then carefully pick off the enemies that were in the turrets before Luke made the final drive to try to complete the level. And sure enough, we were through outskirts moving on to Metropolis. So I was editing this video and I realized we lost the footage from Metropolis. So I'm just gonna recreate real quick what happened here. So we drove the tank over the bridge, Elijah ran me over cause I don't know. I don't know why he did it. What actually happened is um, I jumped on the tank and died. We went into the tunnel, cleared all the enemies with the tank. We jumped on the left side after we got out of the tunnel. We dropped down, we got a wraith. We like pushed a wraith through the tunnel with our bare fists and like using a crate as a as kind of a ramp. And then we spent like an hour or two trying to make the wraith work. And then we realized we could just walk ahead and despawn the enemies. Then we did a despawn we found on Silver's Guide, which um, also Elijah stabbed me in the back during one of these attempts. I think he put down his controller very gently to get up and uh, he was standing in an angle where he could sword swing me, which was unlucky. And then we did the despawn. We did our little trick from the legendary speedrun where we drop into the hiding spot and take out the enemies below through the wall. And that was pretty much this level. It wasn't terribly hard, but it still took us like, I want to say four hours. And we are moving on to the Arbiter. Okay, so the Arbiter was a unique level because it wasn't necessarily one specific thing that was challenging. And we were just down for some sort of different experience. We knew there would be some pains here and there, but honestly, while we messed around with a few different strats early on, the main goal that we had was pretty similar to some of the unorthodox speedrunning strats where we were just gonna fight our way through everything we could slowly and methodically. After the elevator room, we did move some boxes around to block some of the spawns of enemies, which would prove to be helpful. And otherwise we took our time at picking enemies off before calling in our dudes to come in and help. And pretty much after that, we enter this hallway section where there's a lot of elites. And this first one's probably the worst one because there's just a lot going on here. But honestly, having a sword and invisibility was really nice to have compared to the previous 
levels as the Master Chief, and we were getting a little bit better at least predicting what would happen with these elites early on, and how one person could pull the aggro when the other person can go for the assassination. From there, we just went hallway to hallway, picking off the enemies with whatever weapons we could get our hands on, communicating where the enemies were, and trying to break past each area as quickly as possible, but for the most part, we just had to go through it methodically like this, as we felt it was easier and less frustrating than trying to do a long stretch of sneaking past everything with the short amount of time you have with invisibility when you're on legendary difficulty. Eventually, we made our way to the round room, we climbed across, dodging most of the enemies, taking out a couple along the way, and we were able to make our way into the Banshee section, where I just flew the Banshee, hoping not to die, and tried to quickly and clearly get into the final room that would trigger the cutscene before maybe something would happen to Luke and we'd have to revert to last checkpoint. Sure enough though, I pulled it off and we finished the Arbiter. We were feeling pretty good, but the Oracle was next and this level solidified my personal hate for this level. And to this day, it stands as my personal least favorite Halo level of all time. Right away, the elevator at the beginning just was awful because it had so much RNG as to how enemies would spot us. We tried different types of glitches like head glitching and waiting on the sides and just trying anything we could to have the enemies just not bother us because everyone said that's the best strat than trying to fight your way through it because honestly fighting our way through the flood probably wouldn't be the best experience. While there were a lot of other suggestions on how you could just bypass this whole part easily, just trigger the elevator and leave the room and come back later. We tried that, never worked the way that we wanted it to. We tried a lot of different things, but the method we found out worked the best was actually if we just hid up here on this platform once the elevator started going down and waiting until the elevator was at the bottom, then doing some very careful parkour to reach the bottom section. This would be really frustrating when we would mess up this far and have to start the whole process over again because there weren't checkpoints until later. But if we did that correctly, we could run ahead in the level, it would despawn any enemies that were in the elevator room, then we could make our way back to the elevator room, we could wait there for about 15 minutes exactly, and when we pushed ourselves forward again, even though there's still no checkpoints through all that, we actually would be able to clear a doorway that would now be open, we just had to make sure we didn't die in the process. We actually came really close, and we almost died making it into this hallway, but sure enough, we actually pulled it off, we were feeling good, we would never have to deal with that stupid elevator ever again. So then the level gets a bit worse when we got outside, there's a lot of enemies on the side and you can actually sneak past them going to the left and if you're careful enough you're supposed to be able just to pick off the enemies one by one or do some really easy parkour that Luke and I just could not do for the life of us. So we spent so much time trying to find the best route to clear these upper ramp sections that were outside. We eventually realized that going to the right seemed to be a little bit easier for us so we went that way but after hours of this level we were so over it. But fortunately enough we were almost at the point where we would do the invincibility glitch which we had done in speedruns before so we were at least optimistic with that. We just had to make our way into this building, kill the last bit of the enemies, cutscene would trigger and we could go on. So as we're killing the enemies we're kind of struggling a bit. We died a couple of times and reverted but for the most part we had dual needlers which were really great for this. We mopped those last enemies, the cutscene triggered and the game crashed. Apparently this is a very common occurrence if you're playing a lasso and you get to the level of the oracle. There's just a very high chance your game will crash at the cutscene and the best strategy is for both players to spam the skip button the second you're about to load into the cutscene. We didn't know this until after our game crashed so we had to start all over again, go through the same stuff as we did but it wasn't really like the other levels where when we had to redo something we had learned stuff along the way. It was just the RNG of the elevator again and we just had to wait to have a good elevator run where we both could make it and survive till the end. We pushed ahead, we did all the stuff again, waited around again, it took quite a long time and finally the agony was over we were able to get to that cutscene again kill those last enemies and we spammed the a button skipped the cutscene and fortunately we were in the next part which essentially just involved us having to hit our invisibility avoiding most of the enemies picking off the ones that were threatening and then luke would set up the elevator by calling it in where i would stand in the middle platform have it clip through me launch me up to the top it would deload the level from luke's perspective while i had invincibility and i just had to cut all the wires then i had to kind of time out jumping back in correctly. Once I did that though, it would reload it to Luke and we would be invincible. We had really bad RNG with the gravity this time around and we were definitely just bouncing around, floating around, being stuck on this level for a long time, but eventually we did make our way to where we were able to walk again and could push through the rest of this level. From there, honestly, other than just being a little bit time consuming, we were able to kill the heretic leader with our invincibility still active and at least we were done with Oracle and we could move on.
Pokemon and do anything else. Delta Halo was up next, and after we were so hyped to finally finish one of the worst levels in Halo, we figured we should just run Delta Halo the same way we had our strategies for the Halo 2 speedrun. Since technically we did this co-op strategy that we worked on on our own, where we avoided most of the enemies anyways, we actually had quite a bit of progress doing this. Luke managed to kill the enemies that were at that first base with relative ease, and while we didn't have maybe as many ghosts as we typically would have early on, I could still take the later ghosts, hope for the best. I actually ended up taking the upper route instead of the lower route that I normally took for the speedruns, just to make sure I was avoiding every possible enemy, and we hit all of these load triggers that we had known where they are with Delta Halo. Essentially, if you hit each load trigger in the right order, you can bypass the entire level without facing too many enemies. And if Luke could hit his loading spots quick enough, he would teleport me out of there and I wouldn't have to worry about dying. So we actually were able to clear all of that, and all we had was the final room, which we'd practiced this section so many times before on Legendary that we were prepared to take out all of the enemies, and we kind of knew where all their spawns were, and we pulled it off really quickly. And not having to worry about reverting if we took too long or if we got stuck somewhere was actually less stressful than when we have to run this trying to get the optimal time for our speedrunning achievement. All in all, we beat this level in just 20 minutes. That was something we we're kind of proud of. And then we got to regret though in this level. Oh my gosh, there is so much going on on this level. Fortunately, the Halo community as a whole have discovered so many tricks to bypass large portions of this level and Halo Completionist had a great guide on it. So we studied that like it was a textbook that we had our entire career based off of an exam coming up or something because we were ready to just get through regret as quickly as possible. So when you spawn in, the strategy here was to just run straight up into the room where the elite spawn in and quickly assassinate them but not too quickly where more of them will respawn it was confusing but essentially we would open the door if we could clear that area fast enough try to pick off a couple of the jackals that will quickly snipe us away and do a grenade jump with a frag across to the section on the right which would then allow us to jump onto the gondola early from there we had to really coordinate because this jump was really challenging without having like the feather skull enabled where i would have to run ahead throw grenades at where the enemies would spawn and trigger an enemy spawn where they all will load in right here so the gondola will take off and then I also have to make my way back to the gondola before the platform falls apart and I don't make it. This was really nerve-wracking because I literally have just split second to pull all of it off but with enough trial and error and practice we were able to pull this one off and the gondola was moving bypassing a lot of the fights you typically have to do at the first section. Okay so this next part is a little confusing but it ended up being super useful but if we just hid on this side section and avoided the gondola that would pass us and jumped and punched to delay the respawn as quickly as possible. We actually could despawn this phantom back here, which would just be an indicator that there would be no enemies on the gondola that we would have to cross over to and hit the button for, which meant the buggers and all these other enemies that typically spawn here along with elites and stuff that completely destroy you on a lasso run. Trust us, we had problems with it when we were practicing this level. They're just gone. You just get to bypass and go straight up to the tower and there's no enemies at the tower either, which was a huge bonus. So we we're really happy about that. This next area was a little more challenging as these jackals are brutal but essentially we just tried to throw a bunch of grenades into where the jackals are run up to the upper section of this area and grab a fuel rod gun dodging a grunt that's up there also and essentially we'd kill all of the jackals in the area but if we were high enough up while we killed those jackals we didn't have to worry about buggers flying in and ruining the entire section so that was really nice we killed the guys in the elevator with the fuel rod gun and then we were cruising across on the elevator straight over to to the underwater section. Now there's these underwater tunnels. One of them has grunts, one of them has elites. They're really not too bad. They're just kind of something you have to take slow and methodically. And the big open section in the middle where the hunters are, you can actually run a specific pattern, kind of like a zigzag type thing through it. You can dodge a lot of the enemies and we both managed to clear the spot without being chased too bad. Then there was the second elevator ride which took us into this one room that was extremely stressful because there's these two elites that are really not that nice. We had to make sure we took them out and then these grunts start panicking and they make a run for it and we have to make sure we clear all of the grunts before they make their way outside or towards that door because otherwise they'll alert the rest of the enemies and essentially as soon as we get to that door all of the enemies will be turned facing us ready to just destroy us. It was around this time though we also were starting to understand this new head glitching strategy where essentially we could clip our faces through some of the walls and it would make the enemies not aggro us as often. It was really weird we didn't fully understand it but hey it worked and I found that if I 
stood in this corner, I could pick off a few buggers, then head glitch for cover, and we would then work together to eliminate the elites that were back there. It was pretty challenging, but if we could pull it off just right, this pelican would come in, drop off weapons and marines that would distract the enemies, we could run up and assassinate the enemies, get some health, and pick up some guns, and try to make our way to the next gondola. Now, once we got to the next gondola, we had to remember to quickly grab the rockets. We could not forget them like we did on the previous level that we needed the rockets on, and we did this head glitch in this section of the wall where if we just kept walking forward, head glitching and crouching, we essentially would not have to worry about any of the enemies killing us. They just wouldn't see us for whatever reason. Probably because we were on a moving object and our head was glitching in an opposite direction. So fortunately when we got to the end of the gondola ride, all we had to worry about were those jetpack elites that still were around, but we could pick them off after the checkpoint, and then the enemies in the front area before jumping forward to trigger the cutscene and the next checkpoint. And this final area was really frustrating. There's so many enemies, and after clearing all of the enemies, we ran into a pretty big problem. So after clearing out the enemies, there's this major problem where the strat we knew of involves one player doing a rocket launch grenade jump on top of the building, then dropping into the boss fight room, setting up all of these blocks to block off enemy spawns, and then you have to do the boss fight, avoid some enemies that still are gonna try to kill you, and somehow manage to kill regret at the same time. But this really wasn't that good of a co-op strategy. So what we ended up doing was we decided our best method here, and this took us a while to plan out, was for us to clear all the enemies, then use the turrets as items to recharge our health by punching them, and then making sure that if I threw a grenade at Luke and shot the ground, hopefully he would travel just high enough and just far enough, and I wouldn't take too much splash damage in the process to get him all the way up onto the platform and then hopefully me having enough health at this point would be able to then single-handedly throw a grenade and launch myself up onto the same platform. Then we could both drop in down below, push all the boxes, and we would be set. But it wasn't easy just like that. We had to spend so much time figuring out the best possible strategy to not only have it where Luke would land up there every time without fail, but also so that I would have just enough health to survive a second explosion and also land up there. But with enough trial and error, we did manage to get good enough to pull this one off. From there, the main strategy was to make sure we were properly blocking off all of these spawns so that new enemies wouldn't be able to quickly corner us and kill us while we're trying to take out regret, and it would block off some enemies in certain areas as well. It actually was a pretty good strategy, and when we activated the boss fight by running backwards a little bit, we essentially worked together to make sure we were taking out regret while also being somewhat safe. Now the main strategy here, Luke would pick off the enemies that would typically try to ambush me and kill me while I would jump up on regret, do this grenade throw trick, and hijack him. It took me maybe a total of seven hijacks to successfully pull off that quick grenade stick that you have to do five times to kill him, but sure enough, that was all we needed and we were able to clear this level as well. And while this one had a lot of tricks involved, we definitely were feeling like we were over the main hump of this game. We just had a few levels left, but we also knew Gravemind was coming up, and that level single-handedly has the reputation of destroying people's lasso runs where people just give up completely. Jumping into Sacred Icon, things mostly started out the same way we would in a speed run. We shot these things open, we dropped down, we ran through and snuck past everything that we could, we opened up these anchor things and tried to quickly hit the button and then shoot down these giant things, shooting at their legs and quickly picking them off. There is a good strategy to actually pick these off where we hung back and shot at their legs at the same time and it worked really well and that instantly triggers the next part opening up so we were quick to make sure we popped our invisibility just right to get around the corner and then once we got into the room where there's a bunch of flood this is where we typically would split up on our co-op runs and sure enough I would have to do it again. Now this first room was really frustrating because there was this pathway that I discovered on my own that potentially could work if I jumped on these boxes and then hid and then make a run for it and so many times this random flood would just knock all my boxes out of the way and ruin my whole plan. It was very upsetting. I ended up sending Luke the clip of it just so he could watch it on stream later on. But after enough trial and error, I was able to get past that part. And from there, the next sections of the level were actually surprisingly easy. I had known the next area from the typical legendary speedruns that I was able to just kind of run through stuff and quickly make 
my way down to where Luke would then respawn on me. Now, one thing that's really interesting is as it turns out in this last section, as long as you trigger the final sequence of the level, if you just wait patiently and keep the shipmaster, you know, out there available, eventually almost all of the enemies should die on their own and the phantom will come in. And if you notice, you know, your game kind of soft locked or the new wave isn't starting, you can go look for whatever enemy may be stuck. And this is kind of the strategy we did. Luke just hung back. I had enough shields from fighting my way through stuff that I was able to do a quick jump outside of the map, dropped back in on the other side, triggered the back section level to load, and then just hid the rest of the time. And that's pretty much all we did. The shipmaster just put in all of his work and this level was cleared. It really wasn't that bad. And going into quarantine zone, another level that was pretty much a for sure part we thought we were going to struggle with ended up being super easy. We just did our typical speedrun strategy. I drove past pretty much everything. There was one part of the level that ended up taking me a lot of time because I got stuck and I realized I could just boost my ghost a certain way, pop my invisibility and run around. But once I figured that out, the rest of this was pretty much a cakewalk. I had to just hope RNG didn't randomly kill me. But then we had a nice little gondola ride at the end, a quick walk to the end of the level and quarantine zone was done as well. But then we were in Gravemind and that's where everything changed. Well, we just decided to jump right into Gravemind and have an open mind and just hope we would make our way through it. When we were in the first open area at the beginning, we knew Luke would have to jump back or he would instantly die. So that was a great way to start things off. But essentially we killed the two brutes and I ran for the tunnel where I typically can despawn a few waves of enemies. If we did it correctly, Luke would try to clear off the rest of the enemies and get in a safe spot and we could at least skip one wave of enemies. There are a lot more skips you can do, but honestly we just couldn't coordinate them and we just found it easier to learn how to fight the waves. And while it was chaotic, and we did die a lot, and we did try to learn different strats along the way, we finally found out that if Luke hides in this back tunnel, while I hide on the opposite side, the brutes that spawn in will actually just group up at his door, and either I can try to pick off the enemies without them necessarily shooting at me, or Luke can get a pretty good jump on them and pull off some assassinations. It was never perfect, and sometimes the door would randomly open, and that was terrible, but slowly, we at least felt like we had a pathway to maybe clear this first section. By this point in the lasso run, it was very clear we both needed to have marked TVs with some sort of sticker or something so we could see where we're aiming our carbine shots, which were so bullet for bullet crucial in this firefight area. But eventually, with enough chaos and trial and error, we ended up getting past this room, and honestly, that felt like an accomplishment in itself. This first room had already plagued us for well over an hour, maybe even two hours before we had cleared it the first time. But the next room wouldn't be that much easier. Maybe we were just really exhausted from learning the first room that we really struggled here, but there was a lot of enemies and we weren't really ready for them. We spent a lot of time lobbing grenades, hoping for the best. We hadn't saved any carbine shots from before, so we were limited on what ranged weapons we had. And we struggled here as well for probably over an hour. It was really rough. We finally went back to really look through the previous room and we did find a single carbine with a few bullets left and combined that with dual needlers. And while we did the best we could to pick off the enemy slowly and that last brute would always ruin our day, eventually we did clear this room room as well. We used our speedrun strat after that to quickly stick the brutes at the next door, and we would have various strats for clearing this next room, whether it be sneaking past all the enemies or just trying to pick them off. It seemed like none of our strats were consistently working, so we would just try different things until something would work. Sometimes the jackals would ruin our day, sometimes a random brute would ruin our day, sometimes we'd get sniped. It wasn't ever really the most fun experience, but the most important part was that when we did get past the section, we made sure we didn't touch the lift so we could come back to it later if need be. After near getting wrecked by a jackal sniper, we did finally make our way through the lower hallways very methodically. Communication was really key here. We had to make callouts to where the enemies were and it was really important because even a grunt could end us. And finally, after clearing a few hallways, we reached the room we had been dreading since day one of starting the lasso, the elevator room. If you remember back to our Halo 2 legendary speed run, we had to pull off a trick to skip the whole prison section. And while we could pull it off on a rare occasion, it was really frustrating trying it for hours on end having it ruin our runs by it. And finally, we decided to utilize a brute shot with the Feather Skull to easily pull off the trick consistently. But Feather's not enabled in Lasso, and the brute shot trick just doesn't work here. Luke and I both individually looked up different strategies on how to pull this trick 
off for Lasso, so we'd have some new ideas of what to try here. But despite our chat encouraging us just to go ahead and try prison, there really wasn't no way that could happen either. Anytime we would drop into the prison, one of us would, without fail, get absolutely obliterated by the enemies before touching the ground in the elevator. Maybe it is possible with some random RNG chance, but our understanding of this level is that if you happen to get a game seed where you can sneak past the enemies and barely survive, it has to be loaded in from the start of the game. Meaning despite our many attempts to survive the elevator, if the game already decided against it, we pretty much need to start the whole level over again each time until we finally had a seed where there was a chance we could survive the elevator. There was no way that was going to happen, so we pretty much were reliant on this brute shot trick to happen. Now I'll be honest, this was really frustrating because some guides like Silver's Lasso and other guides that were out there make it look so easy, and while we felt like we were replicating things perfectly, we could never seem to just get it right. Nothing was more frustrating than finally getting a brute to follow you in the elevator just to randomly die, randomly assassinate the brute, or somehow just being two inches away from jumping onto the brute and doing the upwards momentum you need to climb back up the elevator. So many times we would try to lead the brute into the elevator and bam, they just didn't follow. I think we were maybe six hours into our run at this point and we had a scuffed checkpoint when we had went back to get shields after we triggered the elevator room. We decided maybe we should just call it quits here. We had felt like we had learned a lot and on our next attempt we could utilize what we had learned but boy oh boy this would not be easy. Night 2 was next. We jumped back on and sure enough we were learning a little bit. This first area was not nearly as smooth as pros at lasso but at least at the very simplest of terms we got into a strategy where we could try new things, stick to what we knew worked, and relearn a couple of things that maybe we had forgotten from the day before. Slowly Luke and I were getting a little bit braver punching brutes to get shields and doing assassin nations. Sometimes we get too brave, but hey, we were at least getting a little bit better. And by the time we got into the next room, clearing that first section, not only was our time a lot better, but at least we had new strats to clear it faster. We actually saved a ton of time clearing the second room this time around as we kind of knew what we were doing. And the big open area was still a little bit more frustrating this time than the night before for whatever reason. It definitely took us quite a bit of new tries and sometimes a bit of luck to make it down to the lower area without getting completely obliterated. We dropped back down, we pushed up through the hallways, and while clearing the hallways this time, we made sure not to get the checkpoint just prior to the elevator room until we had backtracked and healed up first, so that way we could instantly try the trick again if we failed. We of course checked the elevator seed, still got wrecked going down there, but it was okay. We were going to try to learn this trick. We were in a better spot where we could try it more often, and Luke and I actually ended up taking turns trying to pull off this trick, sometimes trying to pull off this trick for hours. Sometimes we felt that we were getting really close and we'd get no luck, but we were really dedicated. We tried this trick for over five hours on stream before it was maybe like 5 a.m. or so. Luke and I decided it was time just to wrap the stream, call it quits. We jokingly said, let's give each other five more tries each and then we'll move on and take a break. So I went for it and on my try number four, I pulled it off perfectly. I had the brute in place. We were moving up. For whatever reason, the RNG god spited me and decided to respawn Luke in the elevator instead of stalling the respawn like the glitch normally works which broke the entire load sequence and brought us back down the elevator. We've never had this happen before, we've never seen it happen before, and we didn't know why this happened exactly, but it was really unlucky. Luke went ahead with his tries anyways, and somehow maybe it was knowing that we had to pull it off in just five tries that Luke got really close on just his second try and actually managed to pull it off on his very last try. The hype was so real. Six hours into this run as well, we were finally moving back up the elevator, bypassing that impossible prison, and we were on our way to a new part of Gravemind. <laughs> it was looking like we were back in it, and we committed to doing an all-nighter and quickly pulled up the strat for the next bugger room because we finally had a chance. As we were learning where the next checkpoint was in the hallway ahead, we knew we would have to push up and get past the elites and wait in a corner for maybe a checkpoint to hit. I finally got a sword after all of this, which is something I feel like I can finally put good work in during a lasso whenever I'm faced off against an elite or something. And then this happened. Did we run to the next one? There's a bugger right out there, Yango. Yeah, what happened? Elijah? Oh no. 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 No, this can't be. You gotta be kidding. 
my internet crashed. Comcast just randomly disconnected me for no reason. All of a sudden, my screen went black, my stream crashed, and I was just staring at a Halo error message while Luke, on his end, had to go through the awful realization that I was no longer in the game and we lost everything. And just to reiterate, when doing a co-op lasso, it doesn't save your progress ever. Trust me, we tried to save it. We tried to reload it. It was a bust. It was pretty heartbreaking, and there were moments where we both thought that we would fall victim to Gravemind as many others had done on their lasso runs. But we were committed to getting that 100% completion. And at least in those last few tries before the crash, we knew we both could pull off this trick. We took a night off, we returned giving it one last try, and the first half of the level actually turned out out to be a cakewalk comparatively to what we had run the first two times. Sure, it took some time, but at least we had done it enough before we knew how to pull everything off. We made our way through the hallways, we struggled at the open section a little as usual, we pushed through the indoor sections, clearing out enemy after enemy before backtracking to get shields and lining up the checkpoint right before the elevator. So it was elevator time, and I recommended that Luke actually went for it first as he pulled it off more consistently in our previous tries, and I can't remember how long it actually took. On Honestly, felt like it took literally no time, but Luke sure enough pulled it off, redeeming this whole run, and just like that, we were back in the grave grind. The next set of hallways had a lot of enemies, and we would have to learn routes that would optimize our survival to possibly get the checkpoints as easily as possible. But we had another issue we were both worried about in the back of our heads. While we were making good time, we still had another large portion of this level to go, and we were streaming at the same time as usual every night, and pretty much at any point, Comcast could just come in and nope me out of existence again, and we would lose all of the progress we had made yet again. We tried to avoid most of the slow and steady strat to focus on ones that could progress us the fastest and hope nothing would bite us on the way back through, and we found some really interesting skips that would work for us, like these bridge sections we could run alongside the top to avoid the enemies, while of course watching out for jackal snipers. There was one section where Luke bounced me over the wall and the enemies wouldn't spawn in, and I could run ahead to the next area, which was nice, though I did have a little problem where there was a room much like that second room from earlier that I ended up having to clear all the enemies by myself since if Luke pushed up, he'd spawn more enemies in. But while Luke stared at a wall and was reading chat, I picked away at the enemies and eventually pushed up where Luke could spawn up with me. From there, we just tried a few different tricks where one of us would run ahead, killing all the enemies and hope to teleport the other player. And honestly, comparatively, this was working really well. At the bridge area where the hunters run out, we had to try to clear the buggers quickly, but using a fuel rod gun on the hunters completely decimated them, which was really nice, and we continued to push into that final firefight room with all the enemies in all different corners fighting each other, who of course with the skulls that were activated would all turn to shoot at us the second they saw us. But oddly enough, Luke and I knew a trick for this going into this that dates all the way back to when we first really started making content on Halo here on Rocket Slot. Some of you might remember back to when we did Halo 2 without shooting, but we ran into the problem that the doors at the end of the room won't open correctly unless we cleared the enemies out, or for whatever reason, a loading sequence timer triggers the doors to open, and since we couldn't punch hunters in Halo 2, it doesn't really do any damage, we needed grenades to try to stick them. So Luke and I decided to run back through the level looking for sticky grenades, and eventually when we found the grenades and had returned, the doors were open, the hunters were dead, and we just walked right to the end. So this time, we did a variation of this trick that is commonly used in Lasso, where we triggered the fight and just ran back. And as it turns out, there's a loading timer here that's around 12 minutes long, where if we just wait, potentially either all the enemies would be dead, or the door would at least be open, which one of us could make a run for it at the end. The wait started, we hoped Comcast wouldn't drop us, and slowly we waited and anticipated and interacted with our Twitch chat. Seriously, thanks to everyone who hung out with us over at twitch.tv forward slash rocketslothyt. You made our run so much more entertaining, but we were ready to approach the last room and see what we were working with. Now, we hadn't had a checkpoint in 12 minutes either, so if we messed up, we'd have to go all the way back. Hope I don't disconnect in the process of waiting, but upon slowly peeking into the room, we knew that the door at the end was opened, but there were still enemies alive. I had a little more health than Luke, and I had run this in our speed run before. It was my turn to redeem myself after my internet had dropped the night before, and I volunteered to make a run for it. I hurried along, hanging to the side furthest away from the enemies, ready for an elite to greet me at the door. He actually didn't turn out to 
be there, and we made my walk across the bridge, finally clearing Gravemind. Oh my god, somehow we pulled this off. We were so hyped. We decided to mess around on Uprising a bit while we celebrated with our chat, and honestly, Uprising's nothing like Gravemind. We just kind of bounced our way past the enemies, snuck around where we could with our invisibility before getting to this outdoor section where Luke just kind of quickly bounced me up onto the cliffside that I was able to run to the cliffs and automatically complete this level as well. We were so hyped celebrating Gravemind that we kind of didn't give as much fanfare to Uprising, but just the general completion of how far we had managed to get so far was something that we were really proud of. But despite all of this, we weren't finished yet. We still had two levels to go for just the Halo 2 lasso achievement, but if we were really going to 100% the game, we would have to not only beat two more levels, but every lasso level in all of the Master Chief collection. We really were only just getting started. But hey, if you guys like this video, make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on for more videos like this so you actually get notified whenever we actually put out content. And make sure to check out our live streams at twitch.tv slash rocketsloveyt. We stream there twice a week, sometimes even more. And sometimes even less. <laughs>